Reflections of a Periscope, a Goward Tower's View. My entire adult life has been spent in a cage. I have been the subject of an ever-present periscope that invades my world constantly. The mirrors of the periscope reveal contrasting colors, blue versus green, the backdrop, a multi-layered gray. The red writing on the wall here reads, no warning shots will be fired in this area. A vantage to the gunner that sits in the watchtower's perch, rifle strapped over the shoulder, a solitary figure watching. Blue moves in groups of no more than five in a clockwise direction. Scattered pockets on the yard, esoteric conversation buzz the air. Subjects here are always guarded and always watching. A 42-year-old man sits in a prison cell in a continual state of hope, working to maintain an acceptable level of growth. Often in quiet times, thoughtful reflection can penetrate. And I think of my teenage self entering prison. It's fair to describe that kid as scared, not panicky, reckless, not dumb, mentally strong, but socially underdeveloped. Naive to the ripple effect that his decisions dating back to the sixth grade would have on just about everyone he knows, the decision to join the neighborhood gang and start to live by the belief system of the Compton streets instead of continuing to live by the morally sound belief system that his grandmother has so passionately tried to instill in him before breast cancer so indiscriminately took her away in the fifth grade. That loss, in effect, would be the one that stripped him of his actively present moral compass. My grandmother being gone left me in pain and would avoid the feel. My mother and father had both lost their struggle with addiction. Crack cocaine ruled their decision making. That left me with my grandfather who was recovering from a stroke. My 18 year old self entered prison with two life sentences a huge chip on my shoulder, a reckless thought pattern, and a self-harmful moral code. With my grandmother being gone, there was no one left I trusted to monitor my way of living. What was there was the streets. The streets are watching. That's how the expression goes. February 1996, I entered High Desert State Prison the new Supermax facility in Susanville, California. Far away from home, I had a new guardian watching over me. For the next seven or eight years, my life would be one of many forms of monitoring. The obvious watching from the guards would be there daily, but another entity would also be keeping a close eye on me. A microcosm of the world I just left was present. The yard filled with tension, the souls full of hate and mistrust, a deadly pettiness exists here. My hood, my city, my gang, my skin will not be defeated was the common uncompromising sentiment. In or around my seventh or eighth year, I started to take notice of myself, seriously giving thought to the way I dealt with things. The apathy that once defied who I was started to dissipate, leaving me wondering, how was I going to find my way out of prison? And more importantly, how was I going to address the way I had been living? With nothing but will and maturity to instigate my rehabilitation, I slowly began to change my views on most things. The things that I used to find of great importance had lost their significance. I still recognized what gang my peers were from, but my emotional attachment to it almost totally disengaged. This was the pre-rehabilitation area in California's prison system. 
Lock them up and throw away the key was still the mindsets of most officials. Left with little opportunity at cognitive therapy, my social needs went unanswered for a while. Over these last seven or eight years, a new focus has taken grip. Opportunities seem to come my way from every direction. I welcome all the positive ones. I was introduced to the plumbing trade. Plumbing demands patience, understanding, and problem solving skills. Plumbing also demands that I be of service to others in need. Being of service is one of the ways I continuously pay restitution for my past wrongs. The shift of the CDCR to the effective rehabilitative machine that is fast becoming has given me opportunity to attend group therapy, which has been instrumental in my cognitive shift to a pro-social mind frame. The influence of my significant other has also played a major part in my focus on the positive. My own three grown children and my guard daughter has been an encouraging force. I encourage all of us to keep peering out the periscope, looking forward, watching. <laughs>